Good evening and welcome to, I wrote a book about on restoration of the Breach Without Borders. My name is Hilary Dunkley Campbell and I'm here tonight with a very special author, Garfield Robinson. Welcome, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Hilary. Thanks much for having me. Really a privilege. Yes, we are so happy to have you. I was, we were introduced to Brother Garfield on uh, Bishop Weatherburn's uh, magnified word that he does on uh, on Saturdays. Um, he came on and he shared. We, I, I fell in love with with how he the, his teaching, and I said I decided to go. We, we decided to go in his book, and here we are today, going to talk about these two wonderful books that he has written. Uh, let me put them up for you to see. Uh, the second one, that's the second one. The first one is uh, Dare to Ask, and the second one is Dare to Contend. But before we jump into that, we are going to pray and welcome the Lord to be amongst us. Father, we thank you today for another opportunity to be here, Lord God, to just share about your word. Lord Jesus, we ask you even now just to rest upon this program. Lord Jesus, speak through us, mighty God. Lord, you gave your son the directive, oh God, to write these two books. And we pray, oh God, that as we talk about these books, Lord, we pray that those that are listening now and those that will listen in the future, they will be blessed, they will be encouraged, they will be edified. And also they will be, they will go out and actually buy the book and support the ministry of your son. So, Lord God, we just give you the glory, give you the honor, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Okay. So, before we start, we just want to invite you to please don't be selfish. Share the program. Like. And if you haven't already done so, please, please, we're asking you to, 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 to subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. We have a lot of programs that will encourage you, bless you, edify you, we teach Bible study, etc, etc, etc. We'll show you all of what we do, but in the interim, <coughs> share the program. And we also want to, to say a shout out to our founder and our leader, Sir Reverend Morrison and his wife, Sherine Morrison. Without him being obedient to God, I would not be sitting here on this program. <laughs> tonight so we thank you sir big up yourself thank you so sir we're gonna jump right into it let's go so, brother garfield should we call you brother garfield or brother robinson just no that's garfield that's garfield just garfield okay brother garfield thank just you just garfield so garfield is good that's garfield yeah okay <laughs> so garfield yes uh, First of all, I want to thank you for writing these two books. I want to thank Bless you for you. writing these two books, sir. These are books that we need in this time. You know, um, we had a guest previously on the program, and the the what she said was, a book is another form of evangelism. Because the book, this book, our books will go places where we would never go. We may sure. never go. So your book could be all the way in Africa. It could be yeah. an, in Antarctica. Yeah. Our books will go where we will never go. So yeah. it's important for us to keep writing. So yeah. we thank you so much for writing this book. But before we jump yes. into the book, we just want to ask you, tell us a little bit about Garfield Robinson. Okay, Garfield. Um, well, Garfield is a Christian <laughs> and has been a Christian for 32 years now. Um, I got saved uh, not in, in, in a church. Um, I remember one day a man was sharing the gospel with us. You know, I wrote it in the intro in my book yeah, as well. I saw that. I saw that. Um, and, and as far as I know, none of the guys um, accepted the Lord uh, during that time. You know, um, during that time, there, there was too much on my mind because I was kind of famous because of football. So, you know, I was playing 
you know, I played for my country, Jamaica. I played a uh, Manning Cup. I played several years of, of Premier League um, in my country. So, you know, with that comes a little fame, you know, or you're well known. Yeah. So okay. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I didn't have any time um, for anything else more than football and fame and girls and so on. Um, but but after listening to the message, I actually went, uh, you know, as I went to to my bed, I just couldn't sleep because it was it was on my mind, you know, um, and so I took up the Bible, you know, took up the Bible, you know, and just opened a passage. There was no specific text that I wanted to go to. I was open, and right there before me was. A, a passage that asks a question that says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And so I just slammed the, the Bible, that bow. And when I closed the Bible, I could not close it out of my mind because it was there, you know, constantly asking me, what does it profit you, Garfield, to gain all the world and die and go to hell, you know? And and it was it was out of that um, um that I actually surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And that was in 1990, you know. It was a little challenging right there and then because, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, because we were party guys, so a lot of my friends said, Garfield, you know, Christian, no, it's not going to work. We're giving you two weeks and then you'll back, you're will you going to be back in the dance hall. And then when the two weeks passed, they promised to, you know, all right, two months, you know, two months will do. And now it's 32 years and God is still keeping me. So Thank you. Um, Thank you, he, can, he, he keeps who he saves. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So tell us about your ministry. Are you involved in ministry? Yes, I attend um, Portmore Gospel Assembly. Um, that's in Jamaica and Portmore Drive in Portmore. Um yeah, so I am a teacher at, 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 at the church. I help with the teaching and preaching and, you know, whatever is, is necessary to help in the ministry. But, but that's my primary gift is teaching, you know, but I do a lot of preaching as well. Awesome, awesome. So what made you decide that, what made you decide that you wanted to write a book? What was the inspiration uh, about writing Book. All right. So, so, so these books actually came out of my Bible study because I'm, I'm, I love Bible study. I love, 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 love Bible. Study. I study. I, I'm always studying the Bible, right? So this did not come about because of my desire. I didn't have any plan to write a book. Really, this came out of the nagging by my daughter. <laughs> You know, I didn't say through the encouragement of my daughter, but the nagging of my daughter, because she was constantly there saying to me, Daddy, why you don't, you know, because she know that because I have hundreds of messages, you know, um, that I prepare through Bible study. And because she would have witnessed me constantly talking to some of my pastor friends or some of my friends who are always, you know, having conversations with people about the Bible and they'll call me for answers and so on, or how you treat this text or how would you answer X? So she, you know, always saying to me, why, why you don't just, you know, put it in, in, in a Bible, in a book form so that, you know, they can have the benefit of this. And, you know, so I gave in and I gave up. <laughs> and so I wrote, I wrote the book, um, and, and so on. So, so actually, these are actually Bible study notes put into book form. I, I'm, I'm smiling here because Sir Morrison <laughs> always tell us that because we have a WhatsApp Bible study group called Next Level, Next, Next, Cl Next Level, Let's, Next Level, Next Climb. Next Level, Let's Climb. Oh, geez. Next Level, Let's Climb. And he was always encouraging us. He said, those teachings that you put in the group, you can put them in a book. And then, you know, recently I went back and I started to look at some teachings and I'm like, wow, 
you know, you just have to, to, to expand on it a bit more. But right there, just from your Bible study teaching, there is a book. There is a book. So that's very wise, 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 wise yeah. advice. So, yeah. we're the, well, we are, daughter, we thank you. We thank you for being <laughs> first assistant. And, and also encouraged by, by my pastor, Pastor Conrad Reed, because yeah. he too was one who, you know, was saying that, yeah, this, uh, that's a good idea, you know, but it originated, it started with my, with my daughter. Yes. And, and my pastor definitely endorsed um, that view. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, we thank both of them. Yeah. So the first book is called, I'll show a picture of it. It's mm -hmm. called Dare to Ask. Yeah. Dare to Ask. Tell us about that, 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 that. Uh, All right. Title. So, so, so Dare to Ask is a book that basically treats 30, 35 questions that are asked in scripture, right? So these are not questions that are asked about scripture, right? But um, that are asked in scripture. So these are questions that people in the Bible ask, you know, whether it be uh, God, whether it be, you know, whosoever, questions that are asked in scripture. So what I did was to, to look at the context in which those questions were asked and to, to explain the background in that particular context and then to give a contemporary application to it you know in that all right so this is what was asked then this was the background in which it was asked so how does it apply to me in 2022 so to yeah. speak right so so that's what but but several churches use this book um to do like um group group studies mm -hmm. because of how it is written because at the end of each question, there are a number of uh, conversation starters. So it is used for devotional. So per some persons use it, it for their devotions and some use it for small group Bible study where, because there are other questions at the end of each um, question that is treated for persons to have discussion um around so you said 35 questions so the book is is done in you have part one part two part three and part one you said dealing with anger and jealousy and you gave like one two three questions there part two you said dealing with jesus and salvation part three dealing with worry and fear and you broke it down in sections you have up to nine nine parts how did you go about choosing the questions okay yeah so because the intention for this book is not that someone would pick up this book and read it from page one mm -hmm. to the end right mm -hmm. this book you can actually choose to read whichever question so if you get up in the morning and you feel down or you feel discouraged or or you feel depressed, then there's a section that you can go to, to, to that treats those, that yeah. treat those things, right? So yeah. you wouldn't have to worry about, but I'm not at that section as yet. I just started um, yeah. verse our uh, page 25. You understand? And, yeah. and, and that section is page 90. No, you can read based on your feeling, based on your need at the time, based on how you're led at the time. So it is it is separated to treat different issues in different sections. Yeah. Right? So so that's how um I group the questions. So like for instance, if I woke up this morning and I'm like, Lord God, why? So I go to page 57 which says do you not care that we perish and you, Excellent. you the, the title is trusting god in troublesome times Excellent. tell us a little about, a bit about that that chapter all right so that chapter um it gives several questions that 
that, that shows that we can trust God, right? So the overarching thing is that we can trust God. So there are several quest questions that, deals, that, that deal with different people suffering uh, different issues. But the one you mentioned a while ago is a story that is well known. It is found in Mark chapter 4 from verses 35 to about uh, 50, 51 there about. No, the situation is that Jesus, and it is so funny because here, here was Jesus and his disciples, right? On one side of the lake. Jesus said to them, we're going over to the other side of the lake. So he said, let's go. So they all went in a boat. While they were in the middle of the lake, there arose a storm. <laughs> but when the storm came, Jesus was at the, the, the back of the boat sleeping. No, because the storm was getting worse, one of the disciples actually went and wake up Jesus. And when he woke Jesus, he asked the question, do you not care yeah. if we perish? No, no, we are, sometimes we scoff at those disciples. And we say, oh, could they ask that? But we sometimes behave the same way, you know. Yeah, you know, we are, when God, we, God, don't, you just, don't you care what's happening to me? Yes, don't, don't you, you care what's me? happening? Yeah. You know, verse 37 makes the point um, that that the boat was now full. So while, so, so while they were trying to survive the storm, the text tells us, that the boat was no food. And it's kind of like what we experience sometimes. We're going through a season in our life where we, we feel like God is, is, is just not present or we feel like God doesn't care. And we say, Lord, we're both full now. We can't take no more. That's how we feel sometimes. And then we ask the question sometimes, um, God, you don't care? Yes. No, it is... In times like these that we need to remember, when you ask the question, do you not care? I'm here to remind you, yes, he cares. You see, you see, some things we need to remember in the storm is we need to remember the God who promises. Yes. So we can, we can, watch this, we can trust his promises. What was his promises? In the text, he said that we're going over to the other, other side. Right. Yes. So come hell or high water, water Hillary, side. we're going to go. So even if the boat is rocking and the boat full, I will feel like we can't take any more. He says that we're and going over to the, to the other side. side. So it doesn't matter how we're rocking, we're going yeah. over to the other side. So we can trust his promises. We can trust his plan. What was his plan? His plan was to take us from one place to go with us on this journey, to take us to another place. And guess what? His plan is good for us. Yes. No, no. We might not understand everything about the plan because he did not tell them in the plan that, listen, you see, halfway on the journey, you're going to face a storm. He did not say, because not all the time God will give us all the information. Because if he, if he did give us all the information, we wouldn't go on some journey. We would yeah. say, no, we can't, we, can't handle, we can't handle it. You understand? Yeah. So, so we can trust this plan. We can trust yeah. his promises. We can, we, we, we can trust him as a person. Mm -hmm. Notice that even that particular text, deliverance was not found in the boat. <laughs> see, <laughs> you see, their safety was not wrapped up in the boat. Their safety and their deliverance is wrapped up in Jesus. So it's basically, you're saying that because Jesus is in the boat, you're good. So, 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 so the thing that delivers is not the boat. Mm -hmm. It is Jesus who delivers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the key, though. Know? It is Jesus who delivers, and we can trust His promises. We can trust this plan. We can trust his purpose for our lives in difficult times. Amen. Recently, I was, I was 
listening to a preacher and he asked the question, is it Jesus in your boat or Jonah? <laughs> I'm like, well, because both of them were sleeping peacefully, right? Quite so. <laughs> so is it Jonah? Is it Jonah in your boat or Jesus? <laughs> So, so I, li I like what you, you wrote it here. You said there's something we need to remember. When we face a storm, remember what he has said to us. He told them that they were, they were going over to the other side. Therefore, it did not matter how much the storm beat against them or how much the boat was rocking. They were going to make it over. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. Somebody needs to hear that. Tonight. Somebody needs to hear that. I, I, I just want to say something else on this, Eli. Mm -hmm. That is crucial. We need to know what we believe before the storm comes. Ah. Because if we don't know what we believe before the storm comes, we'll talk foolishness in the storm. L let, let me say it another way. You see... Jesus already gave them the word mm -hmm. before the storm came. Mm -hmm. And when we, 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 we hold on to what we believe about Jesus and what he has said to us before the storm comes, then when the storm comes, then we're not going to say, you don't care. You don't care about us. You see, if we really believe the word of God that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then even when me feel lonely, I am assured that I am not alone because he promises never to leave me nor forsake me. So, so we need to know what we believe. Right. You have to hang on to the word of God. Excellent. Hang on to that word. So Excellent. another another point, uh, chapter I wanted to look at that grabbed my attention was do you still hold fast to your integrity when it hurts so bad? When it hurts that, so bad. Yeah. And you gave the account of this is uh, with Job. You spoke yes. about the, the when it hurts so it. bad. And so many people can identify with that, Hillary. So when many it people hurts are working right now, brother Garth. So bad. You know, loss of family members. Um, you know, with people who lost their loved one, people who, 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 who have lost uh, their, their, their possessions, you know, whether through fire or through theft, through, you know, people who have lost and, and, and are grieving, you know. And here was a point where sometimes you hear the voices that will say, just curse God and die. And it might even come from those who are close to you because it came from his wife. And she but, asked the question. Yes, go ahead. Garfield, they may not say, hear all the enemy works now. Yes. They may not say, curse God and die. Your mm -hmm. Satan will put it now. He'll just, he'll just say, you know what? Don't bother waiting on God today. Just take the money. Yeah. Just take the money. Yes. You know, yes, and and yes. and you 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 wrote here. You said, um, "Do you still hold fast to your integrity?" Many people are tempted to walk away from the Lord when they suffer. They can't see why a loving God would allow pain and suffering in their life. And you wrote, "We need to remember that His ways are higher than ours. He, he is an infinite, and infinite, and we are finite." And here you wrote, one of my favorite lecturers at seminar, seminar, seminar said, Dr. Delano Palmer used to say, God is wise and we are otherwise. Tell us about that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, lecturers, you know, um, you know, good, good friend of mine as well. Um, I wanted to see him today too, because I, I was supposed to go and deliver one of these books um, to him. Uh, yeah, but, but, but. You know, he always makes the point um, that, listen, sometimes we act as if we, we know more than God or we have uh, uh, better choices for our lives than God does. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we think we know what God should have done to make things better. 
But he says that, listen, God is wise and we are otherwise. You know? so, so we, in and of ourselves, are not as smart, are not as wise as we think. But we know that God is definitely wise. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you wrote, you said, God, could this be true for us as well? That because we don't understand what God is doing, we think that he is trying to hurt us. Definitely. Um, I gave a, 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 a story, a true story, um, to make the point as well, where uh, a, a, a hunter was in the, the, the woods one day and as he was going through he saw a bear and his and the bear his leg was trapped um in in in, in a trap and it, and he was trying to get out and, and couldn't get out so the man approached him to help him by opening the the trap so that his 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 foot could come out but each time he would approach the the, the bear, the bear would, would try to attack him because the bear is convinced that this man wants to hurt him. So what he did is that he shoot the, the bear with a tranquilizer gun so that the bear would go to sleep so that he would be able to, to release the tension from the bear's leg so that he could set him free. Now, while the bear was asleep, he was there trying his endeavor best to pull the trap, but the trap was so difficult to release. No, during the time he was pulling the trap, the, the bear woke up and saw him, <laughs> saw him actually having the trap and, and, and wanted to rush him again because the bear, remember, he actually shot the bear, but the bear doesn't have the knowledge to understand that the shot was not to kill me, it's not to hurt me, it's not to harm me. He actually shot me to help me. Mm -hmm. And in, in the same way, sometimes the Lord allows some things to happen to us, not to hurt us, not to harm us, but to help us. And had he not done that, we would have hurt ourselves. Yes, yes. One of the things we keep forgetting that God is all-knowing. Yes. He knows he knows what's gonna happen yes. before we were even born. Yes. God knew that one day you and I would be sitting here discussing this. Definitely. Book. God is Definitely. all knowing, the omnipotent, yes, the only is. wise God. Indeed he is. Indeed. So we wanna encourage you um to go and get this book. Let me put it up again. It's called Dear to Ask. Dear to Ask. Why the word dear? Why did you say dear to us? Why dear? Well, um, it, the idea is, you know, when one dear, you know, it is having the courage. Mm -hmm. to, it, 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 it's having the courage to challenge something. It is being willing to risk. Yeah. That's the idea. So in other words, it's not something that is easy. It is something that you need to, to, to have a made up mind, to be committed to doing to challenge something that you believe is, is, is wrong or need to be corrected. It, it, it's having, uh, it's being willing to risk um, because it might cost you something, but you will dare anyway. So, so that's the idea. So I'm gonna ask you one more, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I love that. One more question on this book before we go to the other book. How long will you go limping between two opinions? Tell us about that <laughs> chapter. You know, yes. Mother Garfield, what I love about you, just watching you, I don't see you looking in the books, you know. You are just no, because I know, I know, I don't need it. it. I don't have the book here. My I don't have God. the book here because I, I know. That you're just speaking from, from, from knowledge. I love it's that. Bible study. It's Bible oh, study. Wow. So that, that's my heartbeat. So many of the things that you'd mention, the moment you start talking about, yes. I'm picturing the text. So right away, when you start, uh, I'm picturing the text. Okay, so tell right? us about that chapter. How long would Yeah, you so here you was a context uh, in First Kings 18, right? In First Kings 18, uh, we find this man, Elijah, who is a prophet of God, who was somewhat fed up with the, the kind of syncretism of the Israelites. Well, by syncretism, 
I, I simply mean that they were mixing the worship of Yahweh or Jehovah with that of Baal and, and the other false gods, right? So they were trying to join the worship of Yahweh with the worship of other gods. And you know, God forbids that, yeah. right? So he was kind of True. fed up um, with that kind of living. So he asked the question, why, why, why do you go on upscotching? I mean, wavering between two opinions. And, and this is a good challenge. If you look at um, the message on Sunday at Pope Morgan's Gospel Assembly, I mentioned this uh, because I preach on the, the chapter following this um, on Sunday. No, the, the, the situation he's saying, listen, if Yahweh is God, then worship him. Mm -hmm. And if Baal is God, then worship him. I'm not telling you who to worship, but but stop this double thing. This... Make up your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this and I tell you the truth, he has a point here. In our contemporary context, you have sometimes where some people who seem seemingly can't make up their mind. Them have God on Sunday, but them holy and righteous, and then it's a different God on Monday. <laughs> or better yet, Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, it's just different. So it the, the, the prophet is saying, hey, make up your mind. If it is God, then it is God. It, it cannot be God on Sunday and then from Monday to Saturday again. It is you or somebody else. You know, so 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 this is what was happening in the context, and therefore he challenged the, the people to prove who is God and the true God prevailed and was demonstrated that no other God deserve worship because only master God are God. Yes, God are God. <laughs> you right here, you said there are some resemblance of this in today's society. I guess you were speaking. So in the same passage of scripture, there was a, a, a it was written that the prophets of Baal began to cut themselves so that their blood gushed out. This they believe would invoke the inter intervention of the gods. And you write here that there are some resemblance of this in today's society. Some people are trying to get supernatural intervention by doing harm to themselves. This type of practice is demonic. It did not work well then and it does not work well for individuals, no. Excellent. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, I mean, if you follow what is happening mm -hmm. in some circles today, those things are being practiced. Mm -hmm. um, where some persons are actually practicing um, um, in the occult uh, and, and mixing practices of the occult, bringing it among their Christian faith, so to speak. I mean, people who profess to know God and Jesus Christ, you know, actually practicing some of these witchcraft um, things where they believe that hurting themselves, cutting themselves, actually shows a level of sacrifice and commitment, and it lures, it invites the spirit, it invokes the spirit, the power of the spirits. Yeah, what type of spirit? To work it's, on surely their not the, it's surely not the Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit at all. Spirits, but not the Holy Spirit. No, not the Holy One. It didn't work then, and it doesn't work now. Yes. God already paid the price. Jesus already died on the cross. Hallelujah, sister. Hallelujah. You don't have to sacrifice yourself. That Hallelujah. Was all that was, and even then, it wasn't for us, human sacrifice. It wasn't even animal then. Yes. 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 So, people of God, restoration of the breach without borders, we want to encourage you to go out and get this book. It's called... Dear to ask, uh, dear to ask, and it's 35 questions. Like I was, you know, just going through some of the questions that are there. What must I do with Jesus? Which of you can add an hour to your life? These are questions that we do ask at times. Do you love me more than these? Are you, <laughs> are, are we to continue to? Hey, I love this, this one that says. Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? <laughs> yes, yes. If people of God go buy the book, we're not going to sit here and read it. <laughs> go buy the book. This is, it's, yes. it's a nice, it's a good, well, not showing. It's a good devotional 
just to get up on those questions that we sometimes ask ourselves or we ask of our pastors. Um, Brother Garfield, he answers the questions and gives us clarity to the text. So our next book is Dare to Contend. So question for you, Brother Garfield. How far yeah. apart did it take you to write the second book? What was the time span? All right. Um, the first book was actually written after the second book. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so here's how it works. Here's what happened. By that, I mean, I, well, I shouldn't say um, it was written after. The content for Dare to Contend, which is the second book, was there before the content of Dare to Ask. Mm -hmm. But I was advised that because the, the Dare to Ask is lighter, you know, um, you know, so it, it, it is the one that could be used to introduce people to the author and, and also for them to get an, 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 an appreciation of, of the author and his writing before they jump into this one, Dear to Content, Dear to which content. is a heavier book because of yes. its content. So this is the second book, Dear to yes. Content. Yes. So my first question, when I when the question that came to mind, I said, why, does, um, why do we need to defend the doctrine of salvation? Why do you well, think you had to this you you need to write a book about defending the doctrine of salvation? Well, because I think it is not being done by majority of Christians today. Mm -hmm. Majority of Christians today are refusing to obey this particular command, and it is not a suggestion. We are commanded to give a defense, to give an answer, right? To, 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 to wrestle with persons um, for the truth of the gospel, right? Um, and, and there are a lot of things that are being taught <laughs> as means to salvation, which are not means to salvation. People talking about things that you need to do to be saved, or from when people are saved, or what saved. We, this is so, listen, this is the most important thing in your life to understand how can you be saved? How can I be saved? So we need to understand it so that we are able to explain it to others and to defend it where necessary from those who are distorting the truth. You wrote, you wrote in the introduction, you said, we have a responsibility to contend for the faith or the body of doctrine, which has, been, which has been passed on to us. But more importantly, we need to know why we are to contend and how to do it. If we are going to do it well at contending for the truth of God's word, then we need to know the truth for ourselves. So if exactly. we don't know the truth for ourselves, how can we defend what we don't Can't know? Can't defend it. Can't defend it. Can yeah. So and, and 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 therefore we are told uh, in Scripture in Second Timothy two and fifteen that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. Not study to show up ourselves, but to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Hmm? A workman not needing to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when we when we learn the truth for ourselves, then we are able to. Because one of the things I, I, I learned some years ago is that how they train the people who work in the, in, in the banks, um, well, especially then in the past, how to identify the, the counterfeit is by, is by uh, giving them the, the, the real thing, <laughs> the genuine thing. So when they get used to the genuine thing and, 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 and accustomed to handling the genuine thing, then they're able to identify that which is false. And, and the same is true with us. The, the, the more we get used to the, the truth of God's word, then the moment some errors are being taught or preached, something, an alarm goes off in our head. We say, no, man, that doesn't sound right. 
You understand? So, so then we would stop accepting preaching or teaching from people because of who they are, because we like them, because we respect them, because we think they are sincere. They can be sincere, but be sincerely wrong. Yes. yes. So we must not just receive it because it is doctor so-and-so or pastor so-and-so. He might mean well, but he might be wrong. Yeah. So what we need to do is that we need to, to learn how, watch this now, it's not just learning truth either, it's learning how to study the scripture for ourselves. Right. We need to learn how to study this. So we are not just there, just dependent on hearing from uh, your pastor or whosoever at your church. So if they serve you some truth, then that's the amount of truth you have. No. We need to learn the Bible, the, the, the Bible study principles. And, and for me, uh, the inductive uh, yes, I'm, I'm uh, method. Getting I'm, getting, I'm getting there. I'm okay. Getting okay. There. So yes. before, because I'm still at the intro. So okay. I like how you um, gave the definition. You, you, the word content, contend, you, you had an acronym, you, you use it as an acronym. Yes. And you said yes. the letter C in content stands for to combat. Yes. To combat. Yes. Then you said the O, the o, the letter O highlights the need for obedience. This means that if we are to carry out this task of contending, we need to obey God's instructions. Yeah. We are called to comply to ad and to adhere to his word. Then you said the 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 the, the N refers to nullify. This is when we demonstrate that we that their teaching is useless and erroneous. So, you know, we, when we go to church, you know, follow along with the preacher as he's preaching. Look and what make, make sure what he's saying is actually what's in the Bible. And he's not adding or he's not taking away. Excellent. And then Excellent. You said, Be you like said, the Berians. Yeah. You said the T points to teach. We have a responsible to educate people about what the scripture says and what the scriptures mean. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we like to add, we like to put our opinion, we like no. to put our, you know, sometimes the Lord will give us a, a, a directive for ourselves and then we mm -hmm. turn it into a doctrine. Yes, true. We turn it true. into a doctrine when it's not true. biblical. That's True. just something personal between you and God, but yeah. yet still you feel that everybody must follow it. Yeah. And then you said the E in the acronym invites us to examine the word. That is extremely important because we need to evaluate very carefully whatever we read or hear. Mm -hmm. I like that. Then you yeah. said the N rep represents to nurture. As we saw in our reference above the word rightly taught, it is what will bring people to mature as we seek to nurture them with the milk and meat of the word of God. And finally, you said that these stands for demolish. This refers to the act of tearing down every argument that is raised up against the truth of scripture. Why did you feel the need that you had to break it down this way? All right. I, I, I wanted whosoever um, picks up the book mm -hmm. to understand what I mean by content, right? Remember, context is king. So it is. So in this content, in this particular context, I wanted persons. The moment they pick up the book, they realize that the way I'm using content is not to be contentious. Is not to be cantankerous. Is not to be a uh, 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 quarrelsome or argumentative. You understand? So I'm explaining by using the acronym how or what I mean by content that I'm actually wrestling, that I'm combating. Mm -hmm. I'm I, I'm in a combat to to compete against false teaching for the good of the gospel. Yeah. So, so you know, when when persons see this, they approach the rest of the book, understanding what my my contending entails. Yeah, yeah, yes, I like that. I like that. Um, so, people of God, before we continue, we just want to remind you 
this is the book we are talking about, Dare to Contend, A Defense of the Doctrine of Salvation. So I'm going to get to that question. But first, in chapter one, you started off by saying, uh, where is it? So, in my opinion, the most basic and best approach to effective Bible study is the inductive method. This approach to Bible study has three sections. Tell us about that. I'm going to let you tell us about that. Yeah. Um, this is crucial for everybody. I believe every single Christian should learn this principle. Should learn. I mean, there are other ways of studying the Bible, but I think that this, and I know a lot of different ways, but I think this in all my years of studying the Bible has been the most fruitful and it is the easiest uh, method to use because basically it has three sections. It has uh, 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 observation, mm -hmm. interpretation, application. Now, the section of observation basically asks the question, what do I see? You know, in other words, what do I see in the text? What does the text say? That's that's the first section, right? Um, then the second section asks the question, what does this mean? Right? Uh, and then the third section, um, which is application, how can this be applied to my life in 2022? Right? So in other words, um, so I am looking at a passage of scripture that is actually talking about um, David, how he, he slew Goliath and, and, and that giant, and he caused that giant to, to fall, right? But, but, but in collecting the data from the text, I would have recognized that there are some things that I need to follow if I'm going to achieve or accomplish uh, like things like David, for example. Yes, there are no giants today in the sense that they were like Goliath and the Philistine and so on. But what's the idea of the giant? You know, something that's bigger than you, someone that's bigger than you, something that you cannot handle on your own, something that you're not powerful enough to pull down. But, but with the help of God, you can prevail over. So, a Goliath in your life could very well be a boss <laughs> that yeah. has more power than you. You understand? But yeah. then you have a God who is more powerful than the boss that yeah. you need to submit yourself to and not come to him with, 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 with sword and, and spear, but come to him in the name of the Lord, trusting God to fight your battle while you're yielding to God, doing what you can do. What can you do? You can wheel your sling. Come on now. Do what you can do and allow God to do what only he can do. So you can't remove him. Trust God to do that for you. We find a situation where the Jericho wall, you remember, they could not penetrate Jericho. The wall was so broad that even chariots rode on it, on top of the wall. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Was it their voice? Was their voice so powerful that it pulled down the, the, the walls? No. What they did. So the walls can come down while we walk. You see, they, 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 they walked around Jericho. And they did it what? According to what? So God said once every day. Mm -hmm. And seven times on the seventh day. <laughs> Do it according to God's will. And he will pull down the walls. Are there walls yeah. in your life? Are there Jerichos? Yes, yes. So, so that's the kind of thing. You, you look at what you visit the text. Mm -hmm. See what happened in the text. What the text actually says. Look at it in our contemporary context and see how it applies to us. Make it up and make it applicable to you. You 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 said a word there. Context is king. Yeah. When seeking to understand scripture. Ex explain that to us. All right. So it is it is it is the it is the context that determines for us how a word is being used in a text, right? So it, 
because every word has its semantic range, meaning the different ways in which the word can be used. No, we cannot, we should not bring our meaning to the text, but rather pull the meaning from the text. So it is, it is the context that is going to help us to understand how the word is being used in that particular text. For example, Jesus said uh, to a, a young man one day, hey, listen, let the dead bury their dead. You come and follow me. No, for once, we, we understand that Jesus could not be talking about physical dead people burying physical dead people because dead don't bury dead. So for us, before we can understand what is meant by the word, we must understand how it is being used. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we must understand, is it literal dead? You understand? So if we understand how, so it is being used in an idiomatic sense for us to understand what he's talking about. That this spiritual dead person, person who is separated from God, he will bury the physical dead person because physical dead doesn't bury physical dead. So it is it is the context that will help us to understand how the word is, is being used. If I say to you, and I mention the word um, board, just saying board, the word B-O-A-R-D, you don't know what I'm talking about unless I put it in a context. Because the board, when I say board, I could be talking about a piece of stick. I could be talking about um, the executive at my church, which is the board. I could I could I could be talking about the place I'm staying while I'm studying for for college and that's where I board. Mm -hmm. huh? I could be talking about what I did when I went on the plane. So I board the plane. No, I can use all four senses in one sentence mm -hmm. or one discussion where I can say yeah. to you, Hillary, you know, when I went to church this morning, you know, I saw the board. And the board was right before the church door. And so we could not get in. So I had to walk around the back. There I met the board because they were meeting to discuss what we will do with the orphans in the community. I later left in the evening and I went down to Negril where I actually board for college. Because I must get some rest tonight because tomorrow, why I need to board that Jamaica airline. <laughs> I use board in four different senses, yes, but it's yes. the same word. So context is king. Okay. It is the context that will help you to understand how the word is to be interpreted. Yes, yes, yes. And I also like, and this people of God, we haven't even gone into the book yet. This is just the introduction. <laughs> this is just the introduction. And I love that because you are opening up, you you are allowing us to understand. So that don't just just read, just don't pick yeah, up the Bible yeah. mm -hmm. and just read. Mm -hmm. You know, just read for the sake. Because sometimes we as believers, we just feel we, we are so religious. We feel like we just want to do our our duty. Lord, you said I must read your word, so I read I read one chapter today. What did you get out of the chapter? What did you understand? Did it minister to you? You know, the, can you make it applicable to your life? Will you read it through the lenses of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And that's one of the things um, our leader, Sir Marissa, always tells us here. He said, take your time. Don't rush. Yeah. You can get so yeah. much out of that one, three lines, yeah. three words. Yeah, definitely. You know, sometimes we're so busy rush, rushing. That's mm -hmm. why we have to make time to, to, to read the word. And another yeah. thing you say here, which I like, you said that we must not approach scripture with an attitude of pride, yeah. as if we are the determinator, determiner of the meaning, but rather as seekers who want to discover the intended meaning of the author. Definitely, definitely. You see, um, if I actually enter a, a, a supermarket, mm -hmm. um, and let's say I go over to a section where I, I encounter this sweet smell coming from 
these barrels and it just smell like candy and I feel as if I could just eat some of this thing. But on the, the barrel, there is this big red X sign um, that says poison. <laughs> Do wow. not consume. Will kill. No, I I can disagree with the author who penned that and say, um, no, but it smells sweet to me. I want to eat it, but I'll do that to my own detriment, right? Because the author is the one who determines the meaning, what is in it. And the author there says, hey, stop, poison, do not eat. So I might... I must not bring my meaning to the thing. I should receive the meaning from the context, from what the author is trying to say. So therefore, and to do that, there are some basic things that we need to learn, understand uh, the, the language, understand uh, something about the culture, understand what the word means. So there are different things that we need to understand so that we can come away with a right interpretation. So, so one instance would be like where I think somewhere in the Bible where it speak about women are not allowed to speak. So yeah. that doesn't mean Paul so, was saying that we women are not allowed to speak. Women are not so, allowed to preach. So, so context is important. Yes. So we need to understand what is being addressed. Yes. Why what was being said. Yeah. and understanding the background so that is key yeah because you you wrote here and we this is this is very this is some very wonderful information that you're telling us about just bible study so we're gonna go into the book now and then <laughs> so one of the question you have this book is speaks about a lot of issues that are what the right word I want to say? Contentious? Uh, controversial. Controversial. That's the word. Thank you. Controversial. So tell us why, you know, why, why salvation? Why you feel that you had to write about, oh God, I'm trying to find this. The, uh, you see, Hillary, I yeah. think the issue of salvation is the most is the most crucial topic in the entire Bible. Yeah. The entire Bible. So we need to know what it is. How does one receive it? Mm -hmm. That is crucial. And, and, and that we need to defend because there are a lot of, there was in Paul's time, a lot of er erroneous teaching then that he had to correct and we are commanded to do the same. Yeah. So in this book, you address the chapter one speaks about salvation, how it started for me. You start with the Bible and then you even gave us some recommended reading. What was the plan of salvation? The person, the person who, the person who saves, you touch on, you have a whole chapter on justification, regeneration, um, depravity, irres the irresistible grace, Redemption. I mean, people have got reconciliation, predestination, God's sovereignty, um, the love of God, amazing grace. I mean, there's just so much. I don't even know where to start to ask you. <laughs> oh God, let us let us start with salvation. Somebody is unsaved right now, and they're watching. What is, what is salvation? What What is the plan of salvation? <clears throat> okay. As you're defending it, you said to defend the a defense of the doctrine of salvation. All right. Explain so, to an unbeliever so, what is salvation. Okay. So I'll start by explaining why there was a need for salvation in the first place. Yeah. There became a need for salvation because man had sinned. Mm -hmm. Right? Mankind had sinned. And had fallen out of fellowship, out of intimate fellowship um, with God. Now, God wanted to reconcile man to himself. And that can could only be done um, through Jesus Christ. Now, one could be saved 
only through faith in God. He has provided this salvation in Jesus Christ by paying the price at Calvary because mankind, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and, and the wages of sin is death. Therefore, we could not die for our sin or else we'll be dying in our sin because you cannot use something with sin to take away sin. You'd have to use something that is unblemished and Jesus Christ was perfect unblemished and therefore he represents a lamb that is unblemished to take away the sins of the world and 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 so those who have trusted in jesus christ and to receive by faith that gift of god because the gift of god is it is eternal life so if we receive this gift by faith then you will be saved yeah. Amen. And for someone who is unsaved, this is why you need to be saved. That is salvation. When I think of salvation, Brother Garfield, I just think of the love of God. That's, that's one simple word for me. Salvation is love. love. God just realized that the only way that we could be saved is by him. Um, yeah. Even yeah, why I would say a little more on that is that God, God loves everybody, but not everybody will receive salvation. Yes, not everybody right. will be with him. So yes. salvation is only given to those who believe. I mean, St. John 1, um, uh, 11 and 12 tells us, verse 11 says, uh, that he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. Yeah. But to as many as did receive him, to them, to those who receive him, he gave the power to become the children of God, those who believe on his name. So he came to all. He offers to all, but it is given only to those who receive him as Lord and Savior. It's a, it's a, it is a gift. It is a gift that must be received by faith. With, with faith, right. In chapter 10, I found this interesting. God's choice of Pharaoh. Yeah. Explain. Yeah. What is that topic about? All right. So basically, I was just clarifying using scripture to explain biblical election. Mm -hmm. Right? And what it was about. So the, the, the text or the story about Pharaoh was God wanted to show the people of Egypt and the world at large, that he and he alone is God. He and he alone is God. And God wanted to use this rebellious king, this wicked king, to demonstrate his power and his provision of salvation uh, from not only from Egypt, but from sin itself. Right, and so that was demonstrated in the story of Pharaoh and the Egyptian. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that. So, Brother Garfield, as we are winding down here this evening, what do you want your readers to get from both of your books? All right, the primary thing for me, if everyone who picks up this book, leave with a greater desire to study the scripture, my heart would have been full and running over. I would have accomplished my purpose in stimulating the body of Christ to get back to the Bible. To, to, to have a desire, not just to hear, not just to go to church, not just to hear Pastor Piccolo preach. But having a desire to spend that time, that personal time with God. You see, experience comes from, from, from years of service. But insight comes from spending time with God. So if people leave with an increased desire to spend time with God in his word, my prayer would have been answered through these books. Amen. 
Amen. And um, people of God, Brother Garfield, before I have another question that's in my head. So we know some of these topics like regeneration, predestination. Brother Garfield speaks about those, all these topics and more in this book. And we know these topics can be controversial. One of the things I admired about your writing, in, 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 especially in this book, Dare to Content, is the, slim, the simplicity of your writing. It's not um, overloaded with big words. And as you write, you put the you 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 have the scriptures to defend what you're saying. Yes. So it's not like you're writing and saying, okay, accept what I am saying. Here is the scripture. Go and yes. go and research it. Look yes. deeper for yourself. Yes. Yes. I, 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 the, the books they are very simple, easy to read, yes. very straightforward. And I'm happy that that's the feedback that I've been getting from people all over the world, from people in, in, in England, from people in the US, from people in Canada, from people all over Jamaica. The primary thing that they comment or compliment is not just that it is thorough or the, the abundance of scripture, scriptural backing or support that is presented, but the simplicity in which it is written. It, it, it is, I'm a matter of fact, I've heard from a number of persons that if my children, my young children could, could, could read this and understand it, you know, or could listen to this and understand, and that does bless my heart because that's, that's, that was the intent not to come with a lot of, you know, <laughs> I polluted language and, and so on, but just to, to be simple and to be plain so that people can understand and embrace the truth as they, like the Baryans, just like the Baryans to, to, to check for themselves and to see um, whether or not. So while you're reading, contend. I challenge you, contend as well and see if you come out seeing that, hey, amen to that. Amen, amen. So what's next? Is there a next book? Yeah, there's another book, uh, you know, that is book. finished. Um, I'm not so sure I should tell you the name now. Um, it's going to be released um not long from now um it is being held back a bit so that they're just giving this one a little time to breathe mm -hmm. and then that one will be will be out um so what is it what are, what are you writing about what is the it's concept? another deer <laughs> yeah it's another deer and it might be my that. final deer i think <laughs> i've put everything in this one it might be my final deer I'm thinking no. I, I'm I'm not seeing myself doing any writing beyond this last one. Um, it is completed. It will soon be out. Um, when the public, I'm guided by my publishers um, because I just write, but I don't know all the intricacies as to when what should go out and and so on. So I'm guided by those who know. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone that, you know, is contemplating writing? Uh, one, um, know what it is that you want to, to communicate. That's the key. Um, know, know, know in your heart, in your mind, what it is, what message you want to communicate. Right. What is it that you want to do? Uh, uh, who is it that you want to help? Because no one helps everybody, really. If do you think you help everyone? But but who? Which portion? Which set? Which group do audience? you want your, to help? Who's your target audience? Definitely. Yeah. Right. Um. So so do, that will help you in how you pen, how you put your thing together. Right. Um. Because. The, the people you're targeting will determine how you write or how you put the book together, right? The content, yeah. And one final question. Did you face any challenges? What were the challenges that you faced, if any, while you were writing these books? And how did you overcome them? 
Well, to tell you the truth, um, the challenges I, I faced was primarily in the era of pre procrastination. <laughs> um, just putting up. Because once I started writing, it, um, Dear to Ask was written in 20 days. Wow. Yeah, and, and Dear to Contend, as I say, because the content was already, I'm not sure how to measure time with that because th those were actually Bible study. So these are things that I've studied, topics that I've studied that I actually just put in a book form, oh. right? So it didn't, yeah. So when I was preparing them, while I was studying them, they, they took some time. But when I was actually putting them together for the book form, it didn't take any time. And as I said, Dear to Arts took actually 20 days. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Well, Brother Garfield, it was indeed a pleasure. Bless it was you. indeed a pleasure. And when you write Bless the other you. books, we will welcome you back here. No, it is already written. Oh, it's all right. When you publish it, correction. Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. publish the other book, we are inviting you to come back. And yeah, we'll I'll tell you off air what it is. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure the publisher want me to let yeah, it go okay, now. Okay. So I'll tell you off God. here what it is. So yeah. peace of God, there is the number on the screen to get in touch with Garfield. 876-330-5054. You can get in contact with him. And here is the copy of the book. Let me remove the number. So you can see the name, Dare to Ask, 35 questions from scripture that still matter today. And the other book is Dare to Contend. Dare to Contend, a defense of the doctrine of salvation. So if you wanted to know about topics such as uh justification regeneration you know all those sanctification uh, redemption reconciliation reconciliation god yeah. sovereignty combatillabilism yes yeah um the love of god god's amazing grace you know you always hear people these controversial topics he really puts it in a simple form, very simple, very straightforward, and he uses everyday scenarios, right? So you, it, it's easy to, to, to um, what's the, the proper word to use? It's easy for you to adapt to what he's saying, to understand what he's saying. Very simple, straightforward. So we really, enc I encourage you to go and get this book, there to contend, as he said, we need to be able to defend, defend our salvation. We need to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in order for us to do that, we must study the word. We yeah. must study the word. So, Brother Garfield, we're going to ask you to pray as, as, as you, we end on the subject of salvation. We're just going to ask you to just lead someone to salvation. And just, you know, encourage someone in, to, to accept Christ, accept the gift of salvation, and just close us up in prayer, please. Okay. Uh, if you're here, if you're listening at this time, um, a man asks a question in the scripture, and he asks the question, what must I do to be saved? And he was told by the apostle Paul, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And I say to you uh, today, if, if it is that you have never trusted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, today is the day for that. I mean, we don't know about tomorrow. So in the day you hear his voice, at the time that you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't put it off for tomorrow. Don't procrastinate because you don't know about tomorrow. I have a friend who, who told me, I'm soon come. And he died before he came. Almost is not good enough. You need to make up your mind today. If you want to make that decision, you might just, just pray with me and repeat this prayer. There's no magic in the prayer. But if you believe it, you will be saved. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you as sinner. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I trust you with my life. Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, make me a new person. I give my life to you now and forever. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, if you really believe, there's no magic in the world. If you really believe it, the Apostle Paul tells us that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believe unto righteousness. If you believe, you are seen. Thanks much, Sister Hillary. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you to close us in prayer too, please. So, Father God, we want to give you thanks for this time in your presence. We thank you for your people and all those who are listening at this time. We pray that you will, we thank you for the time that you have caused everything to go well. We pray that your word that has gone forth will just motivate and encourage people to, to get in your word and to have that, that, that special intimate time with you, that they will be increase in their love for your word and their love for you. Lord, as we go from this platform, we pray that you will go with us. Bless us, Lord God, and help us to be a blessing as we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Glory Amen. to God. We thank you. We thank you, yes, Lord. Lord. Brother Garfield, yes, I really enjoyed this conversation tonight. Yeah, we thank just want to thank you for writing these two books. Yes, writing Lord. these two books. And people of God, we just want to show them one more time. Mm -hmm. The first book he wrote is Dare to Ask. Dare to Ask, 35 questions from scripture that still matter today. And the second book is uh, Dare to Contend, a defense of the doctrine of salvation, where he speaks about sanctification, justification, election, the purpose of salvation very simple easy to answer format and uh, we just want to encourage you to go and get your copy and the number the number where you could reach him at here is the number where you can call to get your copy is 876-330-5054 and you will get Brother Garfield yourself. So give him a call and connect with him. And you, it's also available on Amazon. Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. So you talk that. Go out and support, 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 support. Glory to God. Brother Garfield, thank you so much. Thank you Love to God. Hillary. It has been a blessing. Really enjoyed it. It has been a wonderful time speaking yes, with you. Yes. We definitely yes. will have you back when you publish the other book. Are in some format. We're going to have you back yes. on this platform. Thank uh, you very much. Yes. Really appreciate well, it, sis. Yes, you're so welcome. Okay. So All people right. of God, don't leave yet. We're just going to show the announcement of what is upcoming on this channel and also we want to invite you please if you have not already done so share this program share this program like comment and subscribe subscribe to our channels and stay tuned for the, the announcement you'll see the the different programs that we have upcoming in the future brother garfield god bless you sir Thank you. Bless you. And don't Bye. leave. We'll talk backstage, okay? <laughs> okay. Stay tuned for the announcement, people of God, and we will see you next time. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your night.